Welcome back, everyone, to another exhibition match replay. I'm your host. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have a match between Fef Fury Regan, who I apparently was named something else, but I don't know what that name was. If you know, please tell me. I would like to know. And Kingstead, who is Kingstead, and has always been Kingstead, and will always be Kingstead, where Kingstead is eternal. They're also blank shield butts. Who got a minor buff this patch? Banners were slightly buffed. Not very much, but slightly. Like the DPS got buffed a little bit. And Fury's going for, or Fury Gone is going for the rovers. And going for kind of a typical start. Double dart. Actually, not super typical. Usually dart scorcher, but double dart works okay too. Double dart and a mason. Just trying to see what's going on. See shield bots going on. Probably hasn't seen those in a while. So, Fury Gone going for Bit of a faster expansion. I mean, Kingstad definitely with their commander going for the expansion. Reg Fury Regan setting up the Mason instead, which is a little odd. Like, generally speaking, you send your command route first to expand just because it's stronger. Like, it can deal with minor raids. Whereas a small Mason gets completely wrecked if any raids come in, which they are very likely to. Kingstad's positioning themselves to at least do a little bit of contain, if not some raids. The Fury Gone's got to be careful about that. I think they might see it on radar. They do now. They absolutely do now. And yeah, Kingstad just doing a little bit of light raiding, just light poking around, seeing what's going on. What is Fury Gone built up? Because we don't know. That's how the game works. Don't know until you see it. And the bandits are about to see. They actually are, have quite a few quite a few Scorchers. Got to be careful about that. So the bandits don't have a lot of great targets to re to attack. Trying to go for it against Scorchers right here. It's looking like they're not going to go for it. Wisely avoiding that fight. Same time, Kingstad is going a little bit for just more expansion. Again, the forward expansion, getting at least getting the metal extractors over on the other side, the other peninsula, or the other little peninsula. What is that? I guess a little cliffside area they have. Otherwise, just trying to keep tabs on what Fury Regan's doing. So far, the Fury Regan is ahead economically, so despite my earlier protestations regarding using the commander for expansion, it did work out. I mean, they they didn't get raided. That Lotus did do them some good. It's well placed. And at the same time, they are taking full advantage of the fact that wind on this map starts out reasonably strong. Like, 0.4 to 2.5... That, on average, is worth it more than a Solar Collector. It's still good to have Solar Collectors, because it's only true on average. But still, on average, it does do a bit better than Solar Collectors. Kingstown, on the other hand, going for the same thing, just a little bit less so. And unfortunately, that does put them in a position where they can be accessing. Even with the Caretakers, they will be accessing a little bit quite soon. Just because they don't have enough energy to make that... All that build power go away. Oh, what? The okay. Well played Snitch there, or somewhat well played Snitch. Gets rid of a Scorcher. Stops a raid that Fury Gun had coming in there at the very least, so we'll give it that, but... Bit of a shame I missed that. Anyway. Oh yeah, Kingstad pointing out in the chat that they have hardly played this year, and I can't say I don't understand, because I haven't been playing as much myself either. But I... I'm glad to see them back. Ah, that's pretty cool. Anyway, Fury Gun is yeah, looking like they got something going with the. Actually, is quite going quite a bit with middle tier units here. Very quickly into the Ripper Ravager. Which I mean, the downside is that they are kind of seeding map control, but the upside is that they could very easily just barrel down and take it. I mean, Scary Land is not a map where you're going to be expanding a lot in all directions. I mean, as you can see, it's got a lot of very dedicated expansion. But, ooh. Another Scorcher goes down to a Snitch, which, I mean, that's not really worth it for the Shield player. But, okay. It's a surprise, at least. Maybe demoralizing. I mean, that that's, could be the main value here, is that Fury Regan doesn't know where the Snitches are. They just know that there are Snitches. And that'd be mindful of that stuff. But anyway, yeah, this is, this is not the sort of map where you're just extending Constructors off in all directions to expand everywhere. It's a bit more directed. So, 
Yeah, I can't say I'm entirely surprised by the fact that Fear Gone isn't expanding very much, because they don't... This map doesn't really support that. Oof. Oh, this might not work out for Kingstead super well. I mean, they're somewhat trapped in this island here. The water is, if I recall correctly, damaging, so going into it is not really an option. Now for Fury Recon, their commander up against Kingstead's commander. Kingstead, they do have the riot cannon. It's gonna help a little bit, but unfortunately not all that much. They are locked in the corner. Their commander is basically done. This expansion gone as well. Fury Recon, having sw really switching over to Reaver, or sorry, to Ravager Ripper was absolutely the right choice. Thug Outlaw coming in to try to at least take revenge. Doesn't quite manage to do so. Doesn't quite manage to deal with... Or doesn't quite manage to let that snitch get in either. Still, though, Fury Recon's commander now the one in the corner. Neither player went for the Recon commander, so neither player can just jump out of this little, little peninsula. They are stuck here. They have to deal with that. So, that's going to be a matter of whether or not these Rippers and Ravagers can actually hold the... Oh, no. Fury Gun just... Never mind. They just knew how the pathing worked better than Kingstead, apparently. Oh, yeah, that's fair. There's that one that one tiny path that a commander could, or any bot-type unit could take around the corner there. Is that true of both sides? Oh, it is! Yeah, okay, so we learned something new about Scaryland today. There is, in fact, a path out of the peninsula that bots can take, including the commanders. So they don't have to die. Kingstead could have actually run away. They would have had to run away into Fury Regon's side of the map, but still, they could have run away. Fury Regon's commander, however, is out of there. Same time, Ravager's coming around the side to take out all of Kingstead's mexes in their main base. And that is going to be an issue. That is going to be a huge issue. I mean, three Ravagers in the main base. is only bandits dealing with it. The bandits are not doing a bad job. I mean, it's tough for the Ravagers to actually kill them. But it's also taken a while, but the Ravagers aren't going to be able to do much besides donate metal. There were enough bandits to stop that, and not enough Ravagers to deal the damage. I mean, Ravagers, they exist to tank. They don't exist to deal a huge amount of damage quickly. So, that's about 300 metal donated into Kingstead's base by Fury Gun. And Fury Regon is not that far ahead economically, so it's... Or even ahead economically at all. It's mostly attrition, actually. That's the main thing. Having killed Kingstad's commander and wiped out a few of their, quite a few of their forces, that's really the advantage here. Ooh, I like the spread of the bandits. I don't know if that was intentional, but it worked out really well to deal with the Rippers. Second Ripper coming in here. Can deal with the Thug okay. I mean, shields don't do much to stop splash damage. But it may not matter. At the same time, there's, you know, Thug Felon coming over here. Thug Felon Outlaw in the main base, wiping out all the Scorches being built up. They're not going to last long. Outlaws did get buffed, I think, in 1970. So, yeah, they're doing they're doing a fine job. And actually, come to think of it, Rogues, I believe, got buffed as well. As did Felons. Felons are just a bit tankier than they used to be. They're not up yet, but they if they do come up, they are going to be tankier. Shield, in general, got buffed this patch. And King's Dead is really putting them out. They're, they're putting them to the test right now. And it's working out. I mean, Outlaws able to actually do their slow properly. The Felons, or the Felons, the Rogues, able to get solid hits in. I believe it was just their, the damage, not the health that was restored to what it was before. But yeah, Kingstead managing to win out on attrition very effectively, even with the metal donations here. I mean, that's forcing Fifth Fury Regon back. I mean, that's the thing. Kingstead's able to completely reclaim everything in their base. They're able to start rebuilding everything. They've managed to actually take an expansion on top of that. Fury Regon is kind of stuck just holding the fort, trying to make sure that they're not going to completely lose their main base to a few thugs because, I mean, that could happen if they weren't defending. And again, Kingstad reclaiming quite heavily. Unfortunately, not enough caretakers in their main base to actually use all that metal. Two more caretakers would be enough, though. But they don't have it. Still, though, quite a few, quite a bit in storage at the very least, so they've got that going for them. But it's unfortunate they had the, re they had the excess. Still, are, are we seeing Sky Dust? Oh, we're seeing Sky Dust. Kingstead hasn't played in a while. I know that Stardusts are useless. They actually are. They're just. Actually, they were slightly buffed this patch, too. But it's more that the 
their overheat mechanic, which was introduced within the last year, was the effect it has was made less severe. May not matter, though. It's not going to matter at all. Six Ravagers simply do not care in the slightest. Not when the Stardust does not yet exist. Second Sky Distover is up. And it's not doing... It's doing okay. I mean, that bar, that's the heat. That does affect its fire rate. And also does not... Oh, that's that Scott is below a little bit too high. The Stardust cannot do much against this Raptor, so fortunately that base is gone. Kingstad coming to the Bandits, though, to help save the day. Does manage... Looks like they will manage to save the Metal Extractors. The Ripper still being a thorn in their side. But the important thing is that it's buying time for the rest of the army to get in there and defend that expansion. Should note that at the same time, there is a convict going over to the south to take a little more in the way of metal extractors. So yeah, time has been bought. In fact, Kingstead looks pretty confident they can just defend it with this one outlaw and these bandits. Going for the counterattack instead, pushing Fury Regan to either sacrifice their main base or sacrifice getting rid of Kingstead's expansion. Perigon choosing to try to take out the expansion. And that I don't agree with. Dami's coming in there, but the Racketeers are up to help deal with that. I should just help deal with everything. But they will help deal with the Dominatrix as well. Fortunately for Kingstad, does lose that expansion. Pretty thoroughly, too. But fortunately for them, they basically have everything else to their name. I mean, Racketeers coming in here, stopping the Dominatrix from doing all that much. Expansion has been lost, but Kingstad still basically has control over the section of the map. So ultimately, it's just going to come down to how long it takes for another convict to go over there, and it's well, not going to be that long. The convict is on the way. Yeah, so Kingstad pointing out they were disappointed in Scottus. Yeah, I mean, Stardust, Scottus were specifically nerfed. That That's why heat exists. That Stardusts, they're intended to be used as just riot like anti-light units, but trying to use them to deal with you know, vehicles or tanks or whatever, which is how they were often being used, got nerfed with heat because basically after a short period of time, their fire rate drops to the point that they can't really be used to defend against heavy units. Against several light units, they're fine because they deal enough damage and splash damage works out, but against a few heavy units, no, they're going to overheat way too fast. That was the idea. That was the motivation behind that mechanic. Oof, and unfortunately, Raptor coming in there. Stardust is up one, might be enough. I mean, can't hit, but it does at least discourage the Raptor from going in there. So, Kingstad manages to secure those expansions. Ah, but unfortunately, those Dominatrices are actually managing to do some work. Grab the Outlaws as well. Ah, oh, that was the best thing for Furygon to grab. Absolute best option there. Still, bandits are they able to come in? No, not bandits, dirt bags. I like that, Kingstad. Coming with the dirt bags, I mean, what's what happens if those get captured? Not much at all, let me tell you. So the dummies forced to retreat. The dirt bags being a nice little tank here, and of course they go down, they create a nice little hill as well. Although that is bot path a little bit. To be fair, bots are more agile, they can work around that far more easily than the vehicles can. So that looks to be basically that. Kingstead, with the reclaim fields over the western side of the map, pretty much has that on lock. So, looking like they're still having a struggle against those dummies. That is the one problem. The Dominatrix, it's Dominatrix squad coming in here. Dirtbags, the Jolly Dirtbags are going to be able to help deal with that. But again, it's going to come down to... Either targeting is going to be messed up for the dummies and just going to accidentally target the dirtbags, or the dirtbags need to jump in and actually smack their heads against them, or... Ooh. No! Oh, the roach comes in. The roach gets killed. I was like, no! King said, don't lose your roach to a dominatrix. That'd be really bad. But no, that's not going to happen yet. No, well, the roach is in position, or in a position. Second one going in in position as well. Should be known where it is. It has been spotted. Does manage to take out three Scorchers, though. That is value. Another one coming in there. We'll take out another couple Scorchers. Again, that does pay for itself. 
Though Kingstad, their main base is heavily threatened right now. There's not a whole lot here to defend it. And it looks like they're, again, trying to just go for a counterattack, trying to push back Fury Regan. Doesn't look likely to work out, though. In fact, Kingstad looking like they're going to be forced to retreat as well. I mean, their main base is heavily damaged. Lotus Force, however, is up. Yes, that is kind of the new defense meta. And it is going to be quite effective getting rid of Fury Regan's forces coming in here. And that at least salvages some of what Kingstad had. Still, they got to be careful. I mean, Fury Regan, they are managing to at least get back parts of the map. They are managing to take a lot of what Kingstad had. And they do have dominatrices. That's kind of ultimately what's going to come down to. They do have dommies. And if the dommies take the dirtbags, that's fine. But if they take everything else, that's a problem. Dirtbags jumping in. And they're, they do their job. Now it's just a matter of moving in on the dominatrices while they're reloading. It's not looking easy, though. Unfortunately, that speed advantage for rovers is coming in handy. And having lost the dirt bags, just not enough. Not sure if Fury Gone is targeting the Dommies manually, but I think they are. I mean, they went for that outlaw for one thing. And that was definitely a solid choice. Another Dominatrix does go down, but Fury Gone likely to be rebuilding them pretty soon. Yeah, another couple coming in after a few more Ravagers. So Kingstad's got to figure out some way of dealing with that. Unfortunately, the lack of speed, or the speed disadvantage on their end is not doing them any favors. And I'm honestly curious if they have anything that they have in mind. I mean, Kingstad at the very least does have a lot of caretakers coming in here. Just not really sure what they could go for right now. I mean, again, they have the bandits, they have... Ah, going for the airplane factory. Good cho good call. I mean, really could be anything. Ravens, Thunderbirds, Likas. Doesn't matter. That will help get rid of the Dommies. And if the Dommies are gone, then Kingstead can attack with impunity. That's really the only reason why Kingstead hasn't been able to just push forward and attack, is because the Dominatrices would turn their army around. But the Dirtbags are coming in. They're looking like they're ready to dance. Ready to bop their heads right into their opponent's, into their opponent's hulls. More Dominatrices are over forthcoming. We five of them by the time that production is done. But, at this point, it's working out okay. It's getting out of angles, though. The Dominatrices are actually in a great position right now. The Dirtbags are behind the rest of the army, relatively. Kingstad realizing this. Spins everything back around. The, the I mean, that's the thing. The Dirtbags are there to tank. And kind of true of the bandits as well. They're both there to deal with the Dominatrix fire so that they don't lose outlaws, don't lose thugs. That's what matters. If they lose the outlaws, it's over. If they lose the thugs, it makes it trickier. But if they lose dirtbags or bandits, eh, it's not a big deal. That's absolutely fine. And another Scottish attempt coming in here. That is not working out, though. Unfortunately, now Kingstad's army is entirely out of position... I mean, there's some dirtbags and dirtbags and bandits. They're doing something, but... Yeah, this snitch is actually going to be what it comes down to, and I think that Fifurigon is well aware... No, they're not! They're not aware of it, and they look like they're about ready to just walk right on top of it as well. And yeah, there it is. The snitch comes in. Fortunately, doesn't deal quite enough damage to kill the Ravagers, but certainly softens them up. The second one takes them out, though. Nicely done there, King's dead. Third one looks to come in, but doesn't quite manage. Further ones, though, are coming in. Convict does get captured. Fury gone. Getting into the overheated sky, sky dust position. But that is a distraction at the very least. Allows... Well, yeah, basically does allow that snitch to come in and deal some damage. More snitches coming around the side. I mean, just snitches all over the place. Same time, Kingstead going into Fifurigon's Gun's base, wiping everything out. Again, the dirtbag is making sure stuff doesn't get captured as well. Kingstead definitely has that advantage economically. Oh, but the Sky Dust getting captured by the dummies. Not ideal. Oh, and the dirtbags also went down. The Dominatrices are 
basically able to run in with nothing stopping them. I mean, okay, there is the Racketeer, and that's nice and all, but they need to actually die, that otherwise the units don't get returned. That <laughs> turp pack trying his best to get in. Does get captured at the very least. The Dominator sees at stop at their peril, get slowed down. That should be the end of them. Same time the main base, the Dominies were killed off. Skydust returned to Kingstead, and now Kingstead, though they are looking like they're kind of... Both, side, both players really at this point don't have much of an army left. Kingstad, they do at least have a bit more being rebuilt, and they do have the stronger economy, and they have the new felon, with slightly more HP. Fury Begon, on the other hand, has half the economy, also has no army, but having to rebuild from a position of disadvantage is going to work out beautifully for Kingstad. And Fury Begon realizing this throws in the towel. That is game. Kingstad takes it after quite a grueling battle with an amazing amount of dummies. Actually, dummies and apparently an amazing amount of racketeers, too, which... Actually, to be fair, not very many. That wasn't a lot of racketeers. That was enough racketeers, but... It, you can, like... Oh, man. Sometimes shield, shield fights... Shield fights against tanks, especially, get, like, half a dozen racketeers, and you just don't get to do anything. But no, King's Dead actually being very efficient. Like, value killed, constantly advantage. Army value consistently behind. Except for a small portion in the middle of the game. Yeah, so Kingstad really coming back from what was an early disadvantage in terms of overall metal economy and a consistent disadvantage in terms of army value and just turning that into a win. I mean, a lot of that army value, however, was Dominatrix. Because at Dominatrix, they are not cheap. So it's just that's the thing. Is when you have the Dommies coming in there, that's you know, 400 metal per Dominatrix. That was 2,000 metal of Dommies. I think that's counted as army value. Yeah, that's counted as army value. So yeah, Fury Gone, they had, like, at their peak, 6,000-ish metal worth of units, but that wasn't enough. Not when a third of those are Dominatrices, and they're not managing to capture them all that much. But I like that. Kingstead adapted really well. Like, throwing in the dirt bags and everything to catch out the Dommies was a great choice. Anyhow, that is going to be the second to last match. The last match for today is going to be a match between Reposter and Dave the Brave. It's going to be on Vantage. And it's going to be up next, so stay tuned. As I expect it's going to be a pretty neat map. Or a pretty neat match. I do kind of want to see someone actually use the new Terraform Mexes, though. Oh, well. It's a new thing that they have. It's Terra Mexes. You make Terraforming, and then... Or you, you do Area Command, and every single Mex gets a wall built around it. That you do with that command. It's brand new in this batch, though. People probably haven't learned to use it. Anyway, going to be back with the next match and maybe, maybe Terraform Maxes. So stay tuned. <laughs>